So I want you to go back to Deuteronomy chapter 20. I got this verses and I've got one more set of scriptures and we'll be done for today. He said in Deuteronomy chapter 20, God is instructing Moses to tell the people. And he said, when you go out to battle in verse 1 against your enemies, how many of you wish there were no enemies? (laughs) Right? We've got enemies. may not be physical people that are against us, but there are spiritual forces working against you. He said, when you go out to battle against your enemies and see horses and chariots and people more numerous than you, Do not be afraid of them, for the Lord your God is with you who brought you up from the land of Egypt. So God is telling us that the battle that we're in is not one where we won't see things contrary to what we're about to step into. You're going to see things. In other words, if you make an attempt of anything in life, you're always going to see the obstacles more than you see the promise. I want to stay right here because I'm going to help somebody right now because some of you are called to a great business venture. Some of you are called to ministry things. Some of you are called to do great things in the earth. But every time you make an attempt to step out in it, you see all the obstacles that show up and you say, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there's all these things showing up. Uh, There's more than I could handle if I step out in that to make an attempt to do what I believe God wants me to do. Yes, God is saying, and he warned the people in the book of Deuteronomy, and I'm warning you, that when you attempt it, when you see things that show up that are greater than what you think you can handle, do not be afraid because the Lord is on your side and he's not on their side. And if you don't have the eyes to see spiritually, you won't see that there's more with you than are against you. That's why when when Elijah was with the servant uh, and they were surrounded by the chariots of the enemy, he prayed and he said, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. And when he opened his eyes, he saw surrounding the enemy were chariots of angels that were surrounding them. And then he said, there are more that are with us than are against us. Oh, I came to tell somebody today, there's more with you than against you. There's more with you than those that are against you. You may be listening to the one or two voices that are against you, but there's a whole lot of people and a whole host of angelic beings that are standing behind those people that are for you and not against you. He said, you're going to see them. You're going to have an opportunity to be afraid. But don't do it because the same God that brought you up out of Egypt. And guess what? We all have an Egypt experience that we can look back to that God brought us out of. There's not a person in this room, if I interview you, you would say this happened and that happened and God brought me through this and God brought me through that. And guess what? The same God that brought you through those other times will bring you through what you're seeing in front of you right now. He said, so shall it be, in verse 2, when you're on the verge of battle, that the priest shall approach and speak to the people. I want you to notice this, that he sent the priest who was anointed of God with the word of God to go before the people. That's what I'm doing today. I'm operating as a priest in your life today, and I'm coming before you today because I believe that many of you are embarking upon something great in your life that you're about to do, and you're about to step into it, and the moment you step into it, all hell's going to break loose. Yes, it is. You say, then why would I do it, Pastor? Because did you think hell is going to send you a congratulatory telegram telling you how great you were to step out on God's word? No, he's not. So guess what? I'm warning you now that it's going to happen so that you're prepared. So that when you step out and you see it, you could start to laugh. That's why Job could say, I laugh at famine and destruction. Why could he laugh at it? Because he had a promise from God that God was going to bring him through everything that he went through. And guess what? He went through hell and back. Honey, when you lose your entire family, your kids, all your finances, your livestock, and you've got nothing, it's hard to praise God. And even when his wife said, why don't you curse God and die? Job said, no, yet though he slay me, yet will I praise him. Come on, somebody. In other words, his mouth wasn't going to get deterred by what he saw because he knew the bad things that were happening to him were not coming from God. Look how simple this is. This is a good lesson for you. God is good all the time. The devil is bad all the time. It's easy to delineate who is who. 